If you're Hendrick Motorsports on Wednesday night, you have to be ecstatic. If you work there, you're popping bottles tonight like your young jock because they had their appeal essentially overturned. And let me explain a little bit further. While the appeals panel agreed with NASCAR and said that Hendrick Motorsports did essentially break the rules with their louvers back at Phoenix, they did decide that they didn't maybe entirely break the rules because they gave all four teams their 100-point penalties back. They rescinded those 100-point penalties and the playoff penalties that went along with that, meaning Alex Bowman just got his 100 points back. He is now your points leader. Once again, he has a 15-point lead over Ross Chastain. William Byron got those 10 playoff points back. He essentially got his two wins worth of playoff points back. He's now sitting real pretty if the playoffs were to start today. If you want to do like that ESPN random absolutely means nothing type of scenario, which Fox will inevitably do three weeks from now. At the same time, the appeals panel did uphold the penalties to the crew chiefs and the monetary fine. So all four crew chiefs are still suspended for four races, meaning they have two more races to serve. And all four teams and crew chiefs still have that $100,000 fine, which is fine because Rick Hendrick has money like that. NASCAR obviously was not very happy with the decision by the appeals panel, which is randomly selected. They said that the only reason they hand out heavy points penalties is to deter teams from doing things like this. And while that makes sense, of course the executioner is always going to be upset when things don't go in their favor. There were some reasons why this happened. Hendrick Motorsports presented a really valid case in the sense that these parts never actually saw competition. NASCAR knew about these parts and told them to go practice with them and then took them four hours later. And that the team self-submitted that car for inspection, or all four cars rather, for inspection. So. Armed with all of that information and the fact that Chad Canal said that the CAD drawings don't match with what the manufacturer is producing and delivering to the teams, and Cog essentially getting hit with the same thing and only losing one louver and not both louvers on the car, the appeals panel sided with Hendrick Motorsports, kind of. So, they get their penalty points back, and that's really what matters the most here to them. The monetary fine is nothing, and their crew chiefs can just crew chief from remote in Charlotte if they wanted to. So at the end of the day, Hinder comes out on top, and this doesn't bode well for all the people that are like NASCAR and the appeals panel favors Hendrick, because once again, Hendrick does seem to get things going in their direction. However, I do think it's a just, you know, rescinding of the penalty. I did think it would be less, though. I thought it would go from 100 points to maybe like 50 points. Either way, though, this does change the playoff picture now going forward, and it's weird that the appeals panel does have this sort of trend now of overturning penalties issued by NASCAR. Before, you would never appeal a penalty because you just knew it would never get overturned. And now the appeals board is just overturning penalties like they're Oprah, and you can basically present whatever you want. Colin goes in front of the board next week for their Louver violation, and by all accounts, they should get overturned. Granted, it's going to be another random selection of panel members, so it could go a completely different way. Denny Hamlin also goes in front of the board next week as well to get his penalty for what he said on his podcast, Actions Detrimental, rescinded as well. And I think he has a valid case, and I think Colic has a valid case. On the other side of things, we got a new penalty on Wednesday afternoon. Daniel Suarez has been fined $50,000 for the contact that he made on pit road post-race at Coda with Alex Bowman and, to a lesser extent, Ross Chastain. He hit Alex Bowman twice getting into pit lane, and there was a NASCAR official standing right there, which is an obvious no-no. Like, you should absolutely not do that and put people in harm's way, especially on a pit road as tight as Coda and as packed as Coda's was on Sunday afternoon. So a $50,000 fine. I am kind of interested in that because last year, Ty Gibbs essentially did something of the same sort, kind of got filed underneath the same uh, part of the rule book, where he swerved and body-checked Ty Dillon and almost knocked him into crew members that were servicing a car on pit road at Texas in the cup race. He got a 25 point fine and a $75,000 penalty. The fact that Daniel was not giving a points fine and a lesser monetary fine is a little bit interesting because it doesn't really seem to jive with the whole consistency thing that, you know, fans have constantly begged for from NASCAR. So it'll be interesting to see if he tries to appeal that. He did put out a funny tweet, which you can see right here of his current financial status. Obviously, can't afford those Nike socks anymore, which are ridiculously expensive for what they are, and that's socks. But at the same time, NASCAR does, you know, or has now issued a warning to drivers of don't make contact on pit road when there's other people around. It's a massive safety violation. And I know all the old heads are going to be like, that's what NASCAR was built on, pit road con or confrontations. And that's fine. 
you can have pit road confrontations. Don't use your car as a weapon. And I think that's really what the whole issue is here. Because if he doesn't hit Alex Bowman square, or if Alex Bowman's just maybe not paying attention, he could easily have hit that crew member, or even worse, if it was further down pit road and he hits other people and then just one singular crew member. So I think they had to issue a fine there and a penalty for sure. And I would be shocked if Daniel Suarez even tries to appeal that because I don't see an appeals board even considering overturning that ruling. So we're heading into Richmond this weekend. Will there be penalties? Will Kevin Harvick go all vintage Harvick over the top like he did with Ricky Rudd? Who knows? But, you know, next Monday could be just as interesting as 